And welcome to another edition on the Aldo Moto YouTube channel. So I think this is going to be my final update on the Shoei Glamster. I think it's about a year in now. So a year ago, I was just uh, almost out of a lockdown, the first lockdown, I think, and riding my 125 um, and getting used to the roads, etc. And the Shoei Glamster was my first helmet that I purchased. So this is a couple of months before I passed my big test a year ago and I thought I wanted something retro. I looked at what the best retro helmets in the market were and I thought for safety, for looks, the Shoei Glamster was the right option. And I've done an initial review about a year ago, which I'll leave a link in the, in the below detail of the comments. And I've done an update, six monthly update as well, which the helmet's been brilliant. It's been absolutely fantastic. It's not a cheap helmet. It was around 350 to 400 pounds. Um, and I got it from Urban Rider, but what, I've had a couple of other helmets and it's experienced with other helmets since, and I'm going back to the Glamster more and more and more. My one big issue uh, with the Glamster was the uh, visor that didn't come with alternative visors. I think that Chevy did say they were going to bring out some visors and it took quite a long, took quite a long time, about six, seven months to get any uh, different visor options. So. That sort of brings me on to the three areas that I'm going to cover today as a final wrap up for the Shoei Glamster. I loved the, the Shoei Glamster previously without the visor, but I think with the new visor, the dark visor, it really completes the look of the helmet. Um, I really like that it's tinted, it suits sort of my style more, and I just felt like with the clear visor, I didn't, wasn't getting that look, especially when you can compare it to um, the Bell Bullet, which I think is the most attractive helmet on the market at the moment in that sort of retro space. And I think that the dark visor really does lend itself to compete with that. In terms of comfort, initially I thought, okay, this is not fitting me that well, but since I've tried other helmets, I've realized actually how comfortable the helmet is. So there are a couple of things that really add to that. So I think in terms of comfort, when you're going along, anything above 50 miles an hour, this is by far the best retro helmet I think that you can buy. I've tried the Hedden helmet, I've tried the Bullet helmet, and the Glamster is by far and away the best motorway helmet, in my opinion, in terms of sound, blocking and ventilation. So you do have some control over the ventilation on the, the top part here on the helmet, um, and you don't have any uh, control on the, the vents here, but with the pin lock system that keeps the, um, the visor clear. The chin guard really, really, really helps. So that's been a, I, I took it off because I thought it was just a bit uncomfortable with my chin, but going above 50 miles an hour on the motorway, the chin guard really does cut out a lot of noise and a lot of wind vibration. It's really good padding inside the, the Glamster, and I think with, if you've got a center system that I, I did fit a center system to this helmet um, over winter that you can still hear uh, the the uh, phone, whether it's phone call or whether it's music, you can still hear that when you're going above 50 miles an hour, where on the uh, bullet, I can't hear anything above 50 and it actually gets quite painful um, using the, the bullet at that sort of speeds in terms of wind across my head. It might be because I've got nothing else to protect my head. Uh, but very, very comfortable. I have washed the insides uh, once and I really, really like the, the way that when you have the visor open, um, you get a really good um, arc of visibility through here as well. Some people do take the visor off as well to get, uh, so they can put goggles on or a bit more of a summer retro look, uh, but I've kept the, the visor on. The only downside with the visor is that in normal, or when it starts to get dark, you really can't see a lot more. So. The, I have put the clear visor back on if I'm riding, especially at night, although I don't do a lot of night riding, so the dark visor is usually absolutely fine, and especially if you come to summer. This will be a much better in terms of glare as well. In terms of tech, um, it doesn't have a vent on the back here. I think that's probably one of the only areas I think that um, they could have increased airflow is with the vent out the front. You could have had a vent out the, the back here. I've had no problems with the um, the security of the, the visor at all. One area that is quite difficult uh, when it's locked locked in is getting that up, especially when you've got uh, gloves on, is getting that visor up. But it does uh, stay up no problem, and it does have a, a sort of a, a cracked area here that you can crack it open a little bit. I would have liked just a very small crack, like a centimetre as well, uh, but it unfortunately doesn't have that. It has that uh, midway point there, sort of a two thirds, 
and then a, a, a full. It's the standard uh, sort of buckle system here with the chin strap, but so I guess that's the only sort of tech. And if, if you're going to fit a, a center uh, system, then I would highly recommend that. Um, and, and again, you get a little or no uh, noise reduction going at high speeds. Value, I think that initially it felt very, very expensive. It's obviously one of the safest uh, helmets on the market. The sound quality and the reverberation in high speeds is definitely a winner uh, for me in terms of making it one of the best retro helmets that you can buy. And I think as an all rounder, you can't go wrong. I will definitely be keeping hold of the showy Glamster and using it uh, probably from autumn through to, to spring again. So please check out the other two videos. I did one as a, a, a much larger review. The second one was a, a, an update and the third, this third one is sort of a wrap up um, with an introduction to the visor, which again, I'll leave links in below. So if you liked the video, please uh, hit like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and uh, please feel free to comment uh, in the comments section below and I will see you in the next one.